Okay, shall we start? Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Muskan Mishra and I'm a BSc Agriculture graduate and a very proud member of former Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Water Resource Council, Chandigarh. And I, on behalf of Parijay Genus, I would like to welcome all of our eminent speakers and audiences from different walks of life who are here with us today to share their knowledge and experiences on our annual online event, Ek Nai Ajadi. The idea behind why we decided to do Ek Nai Ajadi was to let every individual enjoy their state of freedom without any fear. And uh, now that I think we all are here, we should get started. So our session for the topic will be we and water. And I want to start this session with a small message that nothing on this earth is more softer and flexible than water. And yet no one can resist it. We all have discussed all of the topics regarding waters and we have gathered here today to discuss the importance of clean water for all the living beings on earth. Water is life and every living being on this earth has the right to clean water. Now, I would like to hand over the conversation to Dr. Jotsana. She is here with us today. Uh, so over to you, Dr. Jotsana. Thank you. Thanks, you, Muskan. Uh, myself, in Dr. Jotsana. I'm professor in Chitkara University and working in a Chitkara University Research and Innovation Network. We are under the Center for Water Sciences. Uh, I am working on the wastewater treatment, awareness of water conservation in the community in the rural area especially and giving the awareness for the water testing. So now I am introducing uh, our chief guest, Mrs. Deepika Behri, CEO. So I want to introduce Mrs. Deepika Behri, who is the CEO and founder Antrajal, a branding and marketing agency. And she is the president of Vicky Chandigarh. She is also an environmentalist and has worked for various projects related to sustainable development. So, so I invite for the session, Deepika ji. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. So Jyotsna. And I'm really honored to be a part of uh, this uh, webinar. And uh, Ekta has done a beautiful job, who is the president for our uh, Water Resource Council. She has done a wonderful job of bringing so many people together today. Uh, thank you, Deepika ji. Uh, yeah. Through Water Resource Council and under the guidance of our national president, uh, Dr. Mansi yeah. Bhargava, and uh, with your support in Chandigarh, uh, we... Um, really visualize that we can do something better in our area mm -hmm. in terms yeah. of water and we can yeah. we will be able to help and support our water bodies and uh, good water conditions clean water for our community Thank right you. so you. i can see like dr jotsna just said that she is already working uh, for the rural areas and uh, on this similar topic so if that will be a very nice collaboration if uh, Dr. Ekta, Dr. Jyotsna and our national president get in touch and see what we can do because it is one of the sustainable development goals we have to, uh, you know, accomplish in by 2030. Yes, definitely yeah. together we can. Then, uh, uh... We get the Nari Shikti. Jab Nari Shikti Eksat hai, so kuch bhi na mumkin nahi hai. So, so over to very you. right. Very rightly said. And Dr. C. Ekta, to all the audience, Ekta has also shared her vision and mission of the WRC. And I can see that it is a it is very nice what she has written. So I would like to share that with the whole audience. Uh, Ekta, if you may permit. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I hope you have. Uh, I forgot to add. In the yes. Place. No, no, I already have that. So the vision which uh, our uh, dear President Ekta is looking for this year for the Water Resource Council. She says that she wants to work for cleaner water for all, better and better ecosystems all around. Air, water and food are basic necessities and well as 
natural rights for all organisms and very rightly said ekta that uh, we don't have to just look at our needs and what we are getting but we have to make sure that we make the planet a sustainable Uh, give them a sustainable environment that all the organisms including the animals the plants and even the poor people the urban rural areas everybody has access to clean water food and energy hello uh, thanks tipika ji yeah but so, dr yeah. jyotsna i would also like to uh, put in the mission that ekta says she says she wants to continuously work for creating an ecosystem for right plantation waste elimination restoration and conservation of natural resources creating entrepreneurship and employment opportunities leading to a greener happier home our slogan is every corner needs a plant so that's really very sweet ekta and that's very true that every corner needs a plant and you are working towards it i would like to congratulate you on it thank you deepika thank you so thanks deepika ji aapne bahut hi acha ye jo sandesh ekta ji ka hai hamara wrc ka so we will be carry forward with our panelist also Uh, so our first panelist is the dr man sibal uh, Sh- bhargava she is the national president for the water resource council she has deep concerns on the water management in india she aspires to dedicate herself to water conservation and management in india through research writing public and speaking she is on a mission to in inculcate ecological research aptitude and attitude among the youth to chart their life goals she is now on acclaimed public speaker on the various aspects of water and built environment so mai mansi ji ka swagat karti hu and i am inviting her for the session yes dr mansi Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jyotsna, for this uh, humble introduction. May I request to remove the slide because it's a bit uh, intimidating for me uh, to see myself on the screen. <laughs> so, uh, and thanks, Ekta, for organizing this event uh, because we are talking about uh, water, and uh, it's a huge responsibility. But I would like to add uh, the discussion on talking about water leadership. and that's where uh, we are here together as wiki water resource council uh, ladies and also other dignitaries here uh, first thing first because we are uh, really talking about women also in water i would like to draw your focus on what we can do or what i can do uh, as a woman uh, who is also a leader and who is also uh, taking care of water in the house apart from talking about leadership so um, uh, i will First, draw your attention to the sustainable development goals because uh, Deepika did mention about that that we have to achieve certain goals on that. Um, the focus uh, should be on SDG 12, which is uh, the mother of SDG goals. Let me tell you how and why. Uh, should I continue in English or I should use English? As you like. Okay. Uh, so SDG 12 is about sustainable production. and consumption if we continue working on water conservation and management if we continue for example doing all kinds of rain water harvesting all kinds of tree plantation let me uh, give you a very sad um, result of it that it is not enough it's really not enough first thing first if we are so interested in plantation and if we are drawing ground water and planting it's the biggest crime we are making if you are interested in your garden if you are interested in building more if you are interested in doing anything try to find ways to use your waste water not fresh water for any kind of these things even if you put pour one glass of water to your potted plants and thinking that i am doing some environmental activity it is not an environmental activity anymore now okay so any plantation with fresh water which is surface water and ground water now as of we stand today is a crime so we are unknowingly doing this mistake thinking that we are doing favor to the environment no 
Second thing I would like to bring your attention to this whole afforestation business, where we talk about doing lot of afforestation to conserve water, to conserve soil. At the same time, when we are doing development, we are making more buildings and uh, we are consuming more water. It's a double loss for us. A, we cut a lot of big trees, 30 years old, 40 years old, 400 years old, 500 years old. And we, if we plant 100 times more the plant, we lose a tree which was already there or a number of trees. And the new plants which are grown also require water. So all forestation, all plantation is not good. Similarly, all green is also not good. What we have to work on more is actually reducing our consumption and production and consumption of fresh water and production of wastewater. So in, we have to reduce not only the consumption of fresh water, we have to also reduce the production of wastewater. And this is where the role of women comes very, very important and very handy. Because whether we like it or not, women are the home managers also, whether you are a professional, whether you are a homemaker. In, so the charity has to begin from home. So if we can reduce our water footprint at home, and that does not mean that we reduce our drinking water, that does not mean we reduce our cooking water. That means we actually change our lifestyle. We reduce our water consumption in various ways. And what are those various ways? Lifestyle having more houses, more cars, more, um, you know, aspirational goods, ornaments, uh, jewelries, clothes, belts, shoes, you name it, and all exotic foods. The more we aspire to have those things, the more we give load to the water footprint. So if you really want to change and become a very good water warrior in the society, you have to do the least in your life, change your lifestyle. Learn to live with pre-loved clothes. Learn to shop less. Learn not to eat less, but eat less of those junk foods which consume more water. Learn to buy less because you just liked it, because your neighbor has it. You have to change this lifestyle. Learn to aspire less in terms of material. See, I am not uh, giving uh, 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 some uh, giving some gyan on spirituality, but if we want to talk about SDG 12, which is not talked about in the world, which is why we cannot manage water, which is why no effort of forestation and water conservation can ever really meet our requirements of water conservation and forest management because we are not changing our lifestyle. So on one hand, we want to produce, consume more and more of goods. And on the other hand, we are doing a forestation and water conservation honestly is not helping us. You don't manage water. You don't manage forestation. You just manage your lifestyle. And that is what is required. Trust me, water does not require us to manage. And I remember Ekta made a pledge that if I cannot manage water, I will not damage it. And this is what is required. The lesser you produce wastewater, when I'm saying lesser you produce wastewater, I mean the more you buy goods, the more waste you produce. Everything from an apple to even arms and ammunitions in the world requires water to be produced so the more requirements we pose in on the society as that this is required we are actually consuming more water today we stand on our at a situation where the weight of the waste is more than the weight of the vegetation so actually even if you produce more trees we are not reaching anywhere because we are cutting the heavy tree if we can work on reducing our personal waste, reducing our house waste, and that waste is both wastewater and solid waste, everything you buy reaches somewhere. And there is no somewhere in this planet than the ocean or the soil, than the water or the soil. Everything we buy end up on the soil or in the ocean. Whether after a year or after two years or after 20 years, so if we can change ourselves 
and why it is required to change ourselves because after all, I am also a bag of water. I have 70% water, same as you have 70% water. So I, I would like to stop here with a, a thought for you. The water that flows in you, Dr. Jotsna, Deepika, Ekta, Sunita, my dear friend is here. It's the same water that flows in me. It's the same water that flows in the river. It is the same water that flows in the ocean. So if the ocean is polluted, I am polluted. And a very classic and um, it's a very pessimistic line which I want to uh, give to you before I end. But it is for you to think as a food for thought for today. The water is in the drain is the same water in the brain. Remember. So if the water in the drain is polluted, our brain is polluted. Now it's a chicken and egg situation for us to think whether the drain water was polluted first or the brain water was polluted first. And in my analogy of understanding of working in the water for 30 years, the brain water was polluted first because of our aspirational value. Everybody wants to go to the top. We want to become the richest person in the country and richest person on earth and then go and uh, put a habitation in the moon or Mars. And this aspiration is there in every individual. And that is the killer. So please remember the water in the drain, which we do not like and we pollute it more. We don't like the drain, we still pollute it more. That is the same water. And I am telling you scientifically, the chemical composition is same as the water in the brain. So whether we like it or not, it's a very harsh reality. And I wish to leave you with this reality that, that it is same water. Please try to change ourselves. Let us try to change ourselves if we want to manage the water outside. Water does not require us to manage. Water requires us to manage ourselves. If every individual in this country stops managing water, that will be the best day for water. Trust me on that. And thank you so much for having me here. I wish you all the best for a healthy discussion here. Thanks, Ekta, for inviting me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mansi. And it is very well said that is what's the drain is here, that is the brain. That's why now there is a strategy, drain to drink. So we have to convert the drain water into the drinking water. Otherwise, the nature will do it. That is through the recycling. So now I am introducing the another two uh, panelists. And so first I'm introducing them and then, then we will be having the further discussion. So another panelist is our Dr. Rajkumari Smita Deviji. Uh, she is an additional CEO for state level nodal agency for watershed, Manipur, for nationwide project on Pemkasi, watershed component for government of India. Her focus area is on wetlands and climate change. She is also a recipient of the uh, MAP Asia Award in 2007 in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. At present, her work fo uh, focus on spring shed management and uh, livelihood for economic enhancement of the rural community. So I welcome you, ma'am, Dr. Rajkumari ji. So another panelist is our, may I have the another slide? Uh, Garima Punia ji. She is the founder of Kachwewala project, uh, which, which is in Anjaman and Nicobar Island. Uh, she is uh, on waste management expert and plastic waste. She aims to save Neil Island from the rampant effect of uh, tourism and the waste generated by the sea. So uh, now we can come back for our discussion part. So if we talk about nowadays the water, 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 as Dr. Mansiji is saying, we are having the 70% water as our earth planet is also having the 70%. So whatsoever in the Brahman that is same in, in our bodies, it is the everyone's. So 70%, how 70% without which we cannot think for our existence. That's why it is one of the most important Panch Tattva. So our today's discussion will be what are, why we are having so much an issue regarding the water conservation. How can we stop groundwater 
depletion as the mancg is a uh, discussion that we have to reduce the water consumption so under that maximum uses is from the ground water and uh, then how the climatic conditions that affect the degree of pollution in surface water as well as the ground water and if we childhood there was no thing like filtration but nowadays we cannot drink the water directly from the ground water or the surface water nadi ka pani hum directly nahi pee sakte hand pump ka pani hum directly nahi pee sakte to wo kya vidhambna hai so we have to discuss on that also so why water testing is so important nowadays as that of the blood testing so on this the uh, hamare jo panelist hai wo is par prakash dalenge so i am inviting first the dr r k smita devi ji thank you dr joshna uh, and thank you the uh, uh, the organizing committee for having me here tonight uh, today like uh, so uh, so coming to the point like why water is becoming so important now because uh, it is the only you know like though we have Uh, so many water in the whole of the earth only 2.5% of the world water is you know potable and it is in the uh, reserve reserve form in lakes or rivers or uh, ponds or in glaciers or snow caps or in ground water so again this 99% of the fresh water is locked locked up in again like i said ground water and glaciers and permafrost so the uh only the consumption is very very less percentage of the water available in the whole of the earth and again it has become a very uh, uh important commodity in our daily life uh and even the world commission on water is estimating that uh the increase on the use of water will be six fold over the it has increased like six fold for over the last 100 years so we can see like the prediction for water uses will really rise by about 50% in the next 30 years from the current uh, level of water demand and again we have so many like billions of people living uh, in this earth and india as such has the highest population so the demand is going to increase by 50% in the next 30 years that is the prediction now and we have to like coming to the sources uh we have uh, you know like uh it has to be identified coupled with you know like wiser use of uh, existing stocks of water and uh, come up with new water conservation measures water reuse then consumptive use of surface water and ground water and also maintenance of water quality as you said uh, before like why is again the you know the quality of water needs to be tested not like before when we can directly drink from any river or ponds like that because uh, with the increase in uh populations increase in climate change activities the pollution has also increased many fold and it's not like before so these are mainly uh, due to this uh, anthropogenic activities of human beings we can say you know like the cars in the roads or even in the uh, rivers how many times uh, so many you know like transport activity increasing in rivers thereby spilling oils or any other pollutants contributing and again the affluent way of living lifestyle like mansi mentioned before it has really really polluted not just the water but this whole of the earth itself again being fresh water which constitute only 2.5% of the world water reserve we need to think twice like uh, where our water is coming from or where it is going so when we when we get a uh, you know like a bucket of water or when we drink a glass of water we think twice now where is this water from or where will this water go go so unlike uh, many developed countries like united states or uk or germany the management of water in india is a little bit different because uh, in many of the case studies we come across uh, even in countries uh, or even in uh, you know like uh, states like uh, denver or colorado they have specific low for water uses or water where do even where your waste water goes so likewise uh, uh, in india i don't think we have such uh, you know like uh, act or policy or planning for 
water. So we need to think twice as a label at our own level or as a, you know, like we for water, the women in water, what we are, how we are formed and why we need this, uh, you know, uh, uh, platform, only the women's coming together and trying to come up with the best man management practices or what are the different source of water uses or water source in different part of India. So coming to this point, uh, we can directly say that human activity is one factor which is uh, directly affecting water or slowing down the rate at which, uh, you know, like uh, water has uh, as a commodity. So, and again, talking about pollution, uh, water pollution as such, we have so many source of pollution. It can be uh, point, point source or non-point source. So we'll come down to later, but, uh, for for water as such, uh, apart from the uh, how water conservation or what are the source of water in other parts of India, uh, I would like to briefly talk to you about uh, how uh, the you know the scenario of water resources is in the mountainous region of India, uh, especially the northeastern part. So we have uh, mostly the lands are high highlands or mountains or uh, structural mountains as such we have lots of streams and rivers but still we also face uh, you know this uh, water scarcity lots of water scarcity in our area it can be due to uh, you know the management practices is quite uh, not not very good or let's say that uh, lots of disparity in the management and spring we we'll, uh, I'll talk to you briefly about the spring in the mountain region of India, where groundwater is naturally discharged in the form of springs, which occur as a, you know, like a water bearing layer. So mostly these are aquifers with, uh, with uh, intersections with hill slope and, you know, groundwater where water seeps out. So uh, coming to the management of this uh, springs or spring set in, it has become very, very crucial and Again, we can also say that a gross estimate of nearly 200 million Indian depends upon the stream, spring water across Himalayas, then Western Ghats and again Eastern Ghats, and even in Arabalis and some other mountain regions also, 15% of uh, Indian population depend on the springs. And uh, again, uh, Niti Ayok has recently made it mandatory for every, uh, every state in India uh, to have at least 15% of their project cost to be, you know, utilized in spring, manage, spring management. So these are the scenario of uh, different source of water in, uh, in the Northeastern region, especially in Manipur. We have uh, many perennial rivers. We have many perennial streams. We have wetlands. We have, and the traditional method of uh, how we conserve water is through, you know, like uh, these traditional ponds. Every house has a pond in their homestead land or in, a, in a, every community has a pond. This is a very uh, 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 peculiar fe feature of Manipur, unlike again other uh, state like Nagaland or Mizoram or Meghalaya. Manipur traditionally uh, we are uh, mostly 90% at least Hindu, Hindu or Hindu worshipping uh, people and in our traditional way of living we have our own source of water in the form of a pond uh, in our own, uh, you know, uh, in our own homestead. So this is a, a brief scenario of uh, the uh, water situation in Manipur in Northeastern region. And again, uh, when we talk about, you know, like uh, why, what are the effects of uh, this water pollution on environment, and why do we really need to study this? Because Human activity can have a significant influence in either speeding up or slowing down the rate at which, you know, like many uh, point source or non-point source pollution occurs. Uh, in a recent study uh, uh, by my own, uh, for a non-point study in, uh, for pollution in uh, wetlands, we can found- we Sorry to interrupt. Can we have the, no. uh, some question for the audience so that you can um, easily answer those so that the curiosity of the 
audience yeah even even of... yeah even even that will be good yeah yeah so uh just now so, anjal sir sorry to interrupt uh, i think we should invite uh, our uh, panelist garima and uh, let's uh, move to panel discussion yeah so yeah. Uh, we will uh, q and a we will take at the last theek hai okay okay then uh so uh how should we uh, so should i talk more about thing or like uh, are we open to questions now so what should, ah, how should that is as the ekta ji has told uh, the question they will be taking at the end but okay. uh, um, you can brief the things uh, mm -hmm. in one or two sentence then the garima ji the another panelist she can discuss okay, okay. so i'll just say uh, a few words again on what the changes uh, challenges of this water resource or the spring set resources we have this changing climatic scenario especially the erratic rainfall then even some seismic activity you know like earthquakes and all and ecologically degradation associated with then use change for infrastructure development which is again posing huge pressure on the mountain aquifer systems or a decline in you know like winter rain then we have the problem of drying of springs which is again increasingly felt across the this uh, side of the country so in order to ensure like uh, you know like drinking water security uh, we do have some uh, mission by the government like the jal jeevan mission and all but all this again design uh, all this again you know depend on how we do the planning or how the designing or the monitoring is being done or how the capacity of the community is built up you know and again uh, how sensitization and awareness of different stakeholders are they being done or not or uh, and again uh, to ensure that you know like sustained water security uh, through community participation so um, again again i said like unlike the rest of uh, other uh, places of india uh, we might feel that there's a lots of rain even in meghalaya you can see the highest uh, rainfall in the whole world the cherapunchi and um, moshin ram which which uh, which gets the highest number of rainfall in the whole of earth but still they they face drought like situation where they don't have water so so something in our traditional way something is going wrong uh, or uh, in the management practices i can i can tell you a, a very you know like a, a very uh, particular example of a hill community whereas they have all their uh, settlement areas on top of the mountains and where the river flows down the uh, down the mountain okay so by way of their traditional method of living uh, these are these are man made uh, man made uh, management which themselves is in a situation where they have drought like situation for water but the what river is there and water is not there so when we Uh, when we start planning about such such community we came to know that the uh, the this community the tribal people doesn't want to stay near the uh, river but instead their habitation are on top of the mountain and they they face water scarcity so yeah. likewise these are how water scarcity uh, things arises in this part of uh, the northeastern region so uh, Uh, being a short of time, we can uh, mm -hmm. continue with an another panelist. Uh, okay. So nice. Yeah. 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 So yeah. then, uh, please stay, and we have the discussion on the means uh, the questions from the uh, audience also. So okay. I invite the Garima ji also. So Garima ji, uh, are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. 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 so yeah. garima ji uh, so we are listening that uh, there is a depletion in the ground water though the uh, earlier it was not like that but uh, from last one decade it is uh, giving a very grave situation to how to stop this uh so i am going to try and answer the question from the other way around yeah um we get in our country a lot of water uh, through monsoons that's a big part for example where i come from in andaman traditionally maybe about 150 years ago it rained possibly 9 to 10 months in a year and currently we get rain for about 5 months in a year and also a lot of cyclones at odd times uh 
Um, now, when temperatures rise, uh, what also happens is that um, ocean currents get disturbed. For example, from the North Pole to South Pole and back, uh, if water has to come in, which it does at a frequency every thousand years or so, uh, and on the way it distributes nutrients, uh, that cycle has been disturbed. That is something that uh, scientists have documented. And all of this in turn then affects our weather because it is the warm and the wind currents and their interactions in the ocean that cause the formation of clouds or cyclones, things like that. And um, a major reason for why, and Manti very beautifully explained how uh, production has gone up, consumption has gone up. So obviously that is a, a big factor here, not just household consumption, industrial consumption as well, and agricultural, because we're growing a lot of things in places where they should not be growing. Um, I, my native place is Rajasthan. Traditionally, Bajra was the staple grain where I come from. But now, because of policies and the way the market is uh, designed, wheat is grown, which doesn't make sense. It's not even as healthy as Bajra is to that environment. Uh, so it's a combination of things. I mean, we've screwed up the weather, to put it uh, very simply, and we are using up whatever little we have. So I would say that, um, I mean, it's all also connected to the entire fossil fuel industry um, and how we're drawing our energy, consuming a lot of energy. So not only the depletion, which we have to stop uh, for the groundwater, but there is also very much concern regarding the quality of the water. Yes. So as earlier I told that uh, there is uh, uh, water which we are drinking without filter it is yeah. making some nausea so yeah. uh, so why this uh, so how to stop this polluting the water and uh, then the uh, enhancing the quality of the water you would like me to answer this question or would you like to yeah any one of the panelists they can discuss on this the sunita ji or tamansi ji Anyone can discuss on this because it is a crucial thing as yeah. uh, nowadays a lot of ROs are there where we all know yes. there is a three to five times wastage of water. Yes. And uh, how to means uh, the the man, mindset that we have to change that all the water is not uh, impure or how we can improve this by natural way. Hmm. So anyone yeah. uh, of you that can discuss on this, the Mansi ji or the Sunita ji, they can answer also. Yeah, I, I'm just going to say a couple of lines and then uh, maybe one of the others can then take up the question uh, since I've already spoken. Uh, but in terms of um, uh, drinking water quality, um, in my village, we still drink Kueka Pani and it's not filtered, which is a rarity uh, in the country. And... Um, we can develop a lot of waste water treatment technologies. However, that being said, um, when you clean that water and whatever pollutants are removed from it, they will also have to be dumped somewhere eventually. Uh, we can't get them out of the system very quickly. So we have to work on reducing what we put into the water. Uh, are we using a lot of cleaning agents in the house? Can we replace them with something like vinegar, baking soda, or bioenzymes? So all of that is not going into the drain. It's not going into our system. So I think that factor is something that is only recently catching attention. Um, but yeah, that's my two lines on it. And if someone else wants to say something. Yeah. Yes. Sunita ji, if you want to yeah, say. I think, I think uh, this will be a very, very, you know, the biggest challenges which we are going to face in the society now. Even myself, like uh, thinking twice to drink uh, the water directly from a river or a stream because uh, uh, I as a myself as a person or to show some example this can be done but even I can say that this is going to be the huge challenges now being you know like uh, all this uh, bottling of water mushrooming up in Manipur and again at the same time uh, I could not you know guarantee the people to drink directly from the river or the pond knowing like how much pollution has been pollution load has been drained into these rivers and but uh, luckily in some of the remote villages of Manipur they, they drink directly from springs at least for the spring it is okay 
at least uh, in the mountain region, they drink directly from the spring or in the first order stream. But if I if I have to stop them, you know, like uh, in Imphal Valley area or this uh, these towns, I think I'm uh, my my <laughs> my hands are down and it's not it's not a you know one day work or even one year work to come up that cleaning the river or cleaning the uh, where you know like stopping the RO factories. So it's going to be a big deal to fight this uh, industrial in uh, you know coming up for water packaging and all. So uh, we need some more facts. Uh, like the we need some more work of, of water quality testing of the river water or the pond river, uh, this pond water or even the spring water where we can first you know like do the testing and show them that this can be these are free from pollutants. So until and unless that work is being done, I don't think uh, 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 from the government uh, organization that will be feasible, but some NGOs or some CSOs with strong, uh, you know, even I can say, I can use uh, Dr. Mansi's help or even today's uh, group of people where we join together to fight a cause. So it has going to be a very, 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 very uh, uh, impossible task for us to make people drink without uh, you know <laughs> without tasting or uh, not di directly from the uh, so we are again open to um, yeah but there is the always thing that is we do not uh, going for what is the quality on what parameter mm -hmm. it is to be measured so we are, mm -hmm. if the people are not having the curiosity for that then they will be definitely buying the expensive filters Exactly, exactly, exactly. But that filtration unit is required or not required, that is important. So I want to ask something related to that on to the Mansi, mm -hmm. Dr. Mansi. Mm -hmm. The whether the filtration units nowadays is the becoming the necessity or some solutions, alternative solutions are also there. Natural solutions are there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Mansi is listening to me. Yes, Dr. Jyota, she has some emergency, so uh, okay. she might okay. not be there. So, uh, Dr. Time. so, so uh, I would like to add that we talk about so uh, we all talk about the uh, problems. So, can we start that? Uh, how can we find out some solutions? So, what could be the remedial things? Specifically, yes. there are so many remedial mm -hmm. things, the chemical mm -hmm. methodologies and the other industrial methodologies to clean the water. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. again, that cleaning process at the end side product, it will be the some contamination. Will that yeah. be bearable or we have to think some natural process? In natural process, the immediate uh, what we uh, uh, went uh, like during my also put in the community level in the rural areas what we talk about to at least some springs they are really very very clean springs are there and in our uh, management uh, we have built some you know like a uh, uh, natural filtration system where well, uh, we we use a layer of sand and again layer of charcoal in a little bigger uh, uh, quantity in a bigger unit uh, then uh, there is a success story about uh, villages in Bistupur district where they have openly built up this filtration system without the, uh, you know, uh, it is one of our uh, watershed community where they come up with this idea that uh, they have their own uh, water filtration unit, not, not uh, unlike the government. So what they did was have a layer of sand then have a layer of another charcoal, then again, you know, stones and those in the science book, they did it by themselves. And uh, in near a community pond, they built this uh, filtration unit and people are, you know, like people are taking their water and uh, use it for own consumption and instead of buying the bottled one. But in many villages of Manipur, uh, we still are hopeful that uh, the bottled water haven't reached many hill, uh, hill remote areas of Manipur where they directly drink from the springs and river itself. But as such, uh, in the city, it will be a huge challenge. But uh, at least uh, sometimes we really, really you know, like the water which the government in the uh, Nalkaka water, so that 
some people have start, stopped using the bottled water and boil the water and drink that one. Not yeah. RO or not, not bottle, but just boiling that and drinking. That is the only thing uh, which <laughs> we, we managed to do, but but it's a challenge, like it's, it's a it's a it's a tough, you know, job making them to stop this uh, bottle water. Yeah. But the Garimaji, Garimaji is from the Rajasthan. So I know if the Garimaji can agree, there is uh, the fitkri, which generally the peoples are keeping in their homes. So that fitkri is a very good uh, purification for the water. Yeah. So yeah, generally yeah, yeah. when the rain is coming, they are storing this water and keeping one big uh, piece of the fitkri into that and uh, using that water for the whole of the year, rest of the year. So that yeah, yeah. We, do, we do that also, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do that using the alum, potash alum, yeah, pitkri, yeah. Potash alum, yeah, yeah. Yeah, potash so, alum, we do that also. Uh, so, Mansi ji, if you want to say regarding some of the remedial mayas, which can be the natural one, we can use uh, instead of using the RO waters. Because RO is giving maximum wastage of the water, three to five times. Um, yeah, I, first of all, RO is not required. It is now also medically proven. So... We need to really consider that option also in mind. RO is more of a commercial venture. Uh, to make, and we are also seeing the medical uh, flip side of it that we are really getting a uh, shot of minerals in our body and all kinds of joint pains and bone pains are there. Now, um, we're talking about the reject water reuse. Uh, the best thing uh, for reject water, which is the wastewater of the RO, don't let it get into the drain. At least put it in the soil near your place. That's the first part. Now, uh, you know, for me, there is only one point solution to all water problems. Just change your lifestyle and habit. Just stop shopping. As simple as that. I don't need to uh, lift a Govardhan Parvat on my head. And I am not a Hanumanji to carry all the Parvat to solve one problem which can be solved by one Gari Bhuti. And, and I'm bringing a quote from uh, a story from Ramayan, by the way, where one herb was required and the whole Parvat was carried. We don't need to be, do that, all of us. Let us just find that little herb which is required for my cure. And do not go ahead to change the society. I bring Gandhi here. Be the change you want to see in the society. Unless and until I am able to change myself, I should not expect anybody to change in the society. So um, for, from my end, I think the main uh, and important water management is that Please reduce your shopping and, and life requirements. You don't need to buy clothes every now and then. We don't need to buy shoes, buy belts because our neighbor has. We don't need to change our sofa TV every now and then. Learn to share with each other and can you teach? Because as women, it is also important that we change this habit, not only in ourselves, but also in the family and also in the society, in the neighborhood. If you can preach people, See, this is not a direct water, but if I tell you a cup of coffee takes 200 liters of water and a jeans takes 10,000 liters of water, I'm actually talking about reducing water consumption. So I will really not encourage anybody to go and manage water. Please don't do that if you are not expert. Let that be done by people like Sunita, people like others who are water experts. But as a citizen, I am not a water expert. As a citizen, what can I do? I can reduce the load of the waste. That is very much in my hand. I can help the society. I can help the government. I can help the experts to do their job better. But if I increase my load, I make the job of government difficult. I make the job of experts difficult. And I make the planet also very difficult. So I have a simple line, uh, which I think it uh, also says very well. Water does not require me to manage. I need to manage myself. The least I can do is not damage the water. Basic requirements of life, of course, needs to be fulfilled. Please do drink four liters of water. We require 10 liters of water for survival. The country allows you 135 liters every day as a fundamental right, Article 21 of the Constitution. Please go ahead and use that much of water. After that, after that is all luxury. After that is all aspirational. And please remind yourself as an urban citizen, 
you are paying less than two paisa per liter of water. Less than two paisa. I was just teaching, that's why I was late today until 12.30. A poor person in our city or a rural person pays 20 rupees per liter. So you can see the difference. As an educated person, we are paying less than two paisa per liter. A poor person pays 20 rupees a liter. A, a person, a, an urban person uses 4,500 liters to 6,000 liters of water every day. Every day when the national says 135 liters. A poor person uses 1 20th of the water of the national average, pays 20 times more than what I pay. So when we are talking about water management, it is really not about cleaning water. It is about cleaning our mind here. Yes, yes it's definitely you explain the water footprint and which is uh, highly needed nowadays. Means everything in our house that is made up of the water and that makes the consumption of that water by us. And important to add here, Dr. Jyotsna, to purify the water, you need the pure water. And that is the biggest irony for experts and the government. To pu yeah. even purify the uh, desalination or the ocean water, you require pure water. So pure water is the scar. Dr. Sunita already gave the statistic to us. So please savor it. Do not use the pure water to wash your cars, to even do all kinds of things and for excess. Huh? A kg of rice requires 4,500 liters of water. A banana requires 200 liters of water. So I'm not saying do not eat banana. We have to eat banana. We have to eat that apple. Requires 250 liters of water. So that's, that cannot be reduced. But my wardrobe, wardrobe can be reduced. My house requirement can be reduced. My car requirement can be reduced. My travel requirement can be reduced because all this is aspirational and more as a competition, what my neighbors are doing and what my friends are doing. I want to be ahead of that. If you stop the competition, you are already doing the biggest contribution you can do in water management. Do not go out and clean the water because it is an expert's job. Just do what you can do at home, okay? And feel very, very uh, good about it that I am contributing to water management. So everybody does not require to go with the powder and clean the lake and dug the lake. Okay, we don't need to do that. We need to reduce the load of experts. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because okay. everything is coming from the water and that water footprint is to be taken into consideration. I think I will also put my pledge here because I have a an urgent situation at my personal friend. Uh, so I put my pledge here so that um, Ekta, you can take it because I know that I have to do. So yeah. my pledge is uh, I am a water. I am a bag of waste water. And I am in per continuous pursuit of making it better than yesterday. Thank you so much. Okay. And please continue your conversation and please take care and drink a lot of water. Okay? <laughs> Thanks Thank a you. lot, Dr. Mans, Dr. Sunita and Garima ji. Over to Ekta ji. I think Muskan, you can go ahead. Uh, Garima ji, you would like to share your views? Garima, are you there? Yes, yes. Um, Manchi has actually already explained it all so well. You know, there's not much left to say. I mean, we have to uh, start with things in our own space and then only we can think of the bigger things. And if everyone did that, uh, yeah, we wouldn't really have those issues. Thanks a lot. Uh, Muskan, you can please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Uh, now that we are almost uh, at the end of this event, uh, I would like to, <clears throat> sorry. I would like to thank each and every panelist and moderators for attending and making this event a success. Um, obviously, I'm taking away a lot of learnings from this session. And uh, just a few hours back, one of our panelists, uh, retired Colonel Suresh Patil, said that if uh, World War III is ever going to happen, it is not going to be for land, it is not going to be for oil, it is going to be for water. So I think <clears throat> it's high time we take water conservation very seriously. And um, I would like to hand over the conversation now to Ms. Ekta. 
over to you ekta thank you muskan so uh, for uh, join us for the triveni which is mean people 